the nightly business report. Good evening. Tonight, State Finance Minister states that it's not possible to definitively determine the completion date for Sri Lanka's debt restructuring at the moment, but the country is recovering more rapidly than others. The Sri Lanka Customs Department opens a new Internal Affairs Division dedicated to receiving and investigating public complaints. After experiencing mixed sentiments yesterday, the stock market ends in a negative territory today, with both indices showing declines. And Walt Disney predicts that business would slow at its key theme park division, underscoring worries about the slowing US economy. From Studio 24, here's Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Good evening and thank you for joining us. State Finance Minister Shahan Semasinghe stated that it is not possible to definitively determine the completion date for Sri Lanka's debt restructuring at this time. However, he emphasized that the country is recovering more rapidly than others, benefiting from the stability achieved thus far. He further explained that debt restructuring is a complex process and due to the challenges encountered, it is difficult to specify an exact date for its conclusion. He stated that the local debt restructuring, the bilateral creditors, bondholders, then local bank stages are completed and that it shows the country achieved some success. Adding into it, he said that they have achieved this while maintaining economic stability and in keeping with the IMF program. Responding to a question on the contracts with Lassard and Clifford Chance LLP, he answered that they have to extend agreements in stages. Lassard France has successfully worked with other defaulted nations to complete debt restructuring. Minister Sema Singh stated that compared to other bankrupt countries, the stability and restructuring Sri Lanka has shown an economic pickup in the shortest time. The Sri Lanka Customs Department's Internal Affairs Division, dedicated to receiving and investigating public complaints, was officially inaugurated by the Minister of State for Finance, Ranjit Semblapetia. In his remarks, the minister highlighted that the primary aim of this initiative is to further enhance the relationship between the public and customs department. He acknowledged that the department's exceptional performance in surpassing revenue targets, which has garnered both praise and criticism. Minister Simbala PTA emphasized the significance of establishing this division to build trust and transparency, thereby strengthening the connection between the public and the customs department. He pointed out that in recognition of the department's critical role in the country's economy, it is crucial to ensure that public concerns are addressed effectively. Additionally, the minister announced that this complaint system will soon be extended to other key departments, including local revenue and excise, to foster a similar level of public engagement and oversight. Notably, complaints can be submitted without providing unique identifiers, allowing for a great anonymity and encouraging more people to come forward with their concerns. Official data shows that Sri Lanka's forex reserves fell marginally to $5,649 million in July 2024 from $5,654 million US dollars in June. In June, the central bank sold about $57 million US dollars in the interbank market in June after a spike in liquidity from earlier strong dollar purchases and a rise in private credit. Market participants said that in August there has been dollar purchases on some days with the the excess liquidity mostly extinguished. Similar trends were seen in June and July in 2023 after steep collections in earlier months. Analysts had pointed out that a reluctance to maintain the exchange rate when pressure comes from excess liquidity-driven credit leads to a confidence shock to market participants. Sri Lanka's Minister of Power and Energy, Kanchana Vijayasekara, said he had discussed salary structures and a voluntary retirement scheme policy with state-run power utility management and trade unions. Vijayasekara met Ceylon Electricity Board management and trade unions recently. The minister said on next that progress and current status of CEB reforms, appointments to key new institutes, human resource management policy, proposed new salary structures, performance-based incentive systems and the VRS policy was discussed. He added that last week the National System Operator and the National Electricity Sector Advisory Council was established with the approval of the Cabinet of Ministers. Vijay Sekhar told reporters last month that the government will gradually reduce the 26,000 approved cadre in the CEB through a VRS and by not filling retired cadre position unless it is necessary while restructuring CEB. 
Minister Kanchan in the past has said the CEB could be managed with only 5,000 cadres instead of the current approved 26,000. Let's go for a short commercial break now. Equity market updates right after this. This is the Nightly Business Report. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Following mixed sentiments yesterday, the stock market closed in the red today with both the All Share Price Index and the S&P SL20 Index posting losses. Additionally, today's turnover was marginally lower. For a detailed summary of today's market performance, let's turn to Minal Vikramage from Capital Alliance Securities. Today, the Columbus Stock Exchange concluded on a negative note. Compared to the previous session, due to overall negative sentiment among the market participants. The market ended at 11,253 points, marking a 40.82 point decrease from the previous session, with a turnover of 620 million rupees. The SL20 index also experienced a downward movement of 8.8 .8 points to end the day at 3,115 points. Notable institutional engagement was observed across various sectors with high turnovers recorded on Sampath Bank and John Kills Holdings and a crossing recorded on Central Finance. The top five gainers for the day were SMB Leasing Non-Voting, Industrial Asphalts, Tess Agro Non-Voting, Southers Motors and St. Caracalla Finance. The top five losers for the day were Nation Lager Finance, Blue Diamond Jewelry, Lake House Sprinters PLC, Muller & Phipps PLC and the Autodrome PLC. Shifting focus to the country's external sector now, how has the Sri Lankan external sector performed in the month of June? Well, to provide detailed insights, we have Zaima Jihan from First Capital Holdings with us. In terms of the external sector performance, during the month of June, uh, the trade deficit was recorded at uh, USD 369.6 million, displaying only a marginal increase uh, on a year-over-year basis. Uh, so this was led by a 7.1% increase in exports and a 5.7% increase in imports. And uh, when we take the first half of this year into consideration, exports have picked up by 4.7% while imports increased further higher by 6.4%. Uh, uh, also, there has been a notable improvement in tourism earnings by 77.9%. Uh, amounting to USD 875 million uh, during the first six months of this year, given the sharp influx in arrivals. Uh, so for the month of June, tourism earnings were recorded at uh, USD 151.1 million, uh, rising by 23% on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, meanwhile, work remittances also picked up during June by 9.2% uh, year-over-year, to USD 519.6 million. And uh, if we look at the currency movement, Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated against the US dollar by 7.1% on a year to date basis up to July, uh, led by the improvement in key economic indicators and the robust dollar purchases by CBSL. Uh, particularly in the month of July, the rupee was uh, broadly stable despite some uh, intermittent volatility. Uh, however, we expect this appreciation trend to slow down and uh, result in a possible depreciation in the rupee uh, during the second half. And uh, one of the main reasons would be the anticipated increase in import expense during this period and also the uh, repayment of loans which will begin in September. Uh, however, increase in earnings from uh, tourism will provide some relief to the rupee. Gold prices steadied in Asian trade today, recouping some recent losses as increased volatility in risk-driven markets, particularly stocks, kept safe havens relatively well bid. Spot gold rose 0.5% to $2,394 and 
15 cents an ounce, while gold futures expiring in December steadied at $2,433.10 an ounce. Broader metal markets advanced but still remained mostly range-bound amid uncertainty over the global economy and interest rates. Among industrial metals, copper prices rose today but recouped only a fraction of recent losses, with weak import from data further undermining the red metal. Oil prices fell in choppy trade today and looked set to snap a two-session streak during which they gained about 3% due to growing supply risks amid simmering tensions in the Middle East. Brent crude futures fell 25 cents or 0.3% to $78.08 a barrel while U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude lost 13 cents or 0.3% to $75.10. The potential for Middle East supply disruptions have caused volatility with the killing of senior members of militant group Hamas and Hezbollah last week, raising the possibility of retaliatory strikes by Iran against Israel. However, supply has not been affected so far, although attacks on ships in the Red Sea have forced tankers to take longer routes. Following a sudden depreciation in recent days, the Sri Lankan rupee has appreciated slightly against the U.S. dollar today, as reported by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. The buying rate of the U.S. dollar has decreased from 297 rupees and 50 cents to 297 rupees and 1 cent, while the selling rate has dropped from 306 rupees and 76 cents to 306 rupees and 28 cents. The rupee also showed gains against several other global currencies. Let's take a closer look at some of the current exchange rates. break now updates from the corporate world coming right after this this is the nightly business report welcome back to the nightly business report Tokyo Cement Group reported a turnover of 11,665 million rupees and a profit after tax of 707 million rupees for the first quarter, ended on the 30th of June 2024. The decline in turnover compared to the previous year, despite recording an increase in sales volume, is due to the reduction in prices in the corresponding quarters. Passing on the benefit of cost reductions to consumers, the cement industry announced two downward price revisions which brought the maximum retail price of a 50 kilogram bag of cement to 2250 rupees. The current year started off with a positive economic outlook, with the country's year on year gross domestic product for the first quarter of 2024 reporting a 5.3% growth. The rupee appreciating against the US dollar facilitated the reductions in the cost of imported raw materials, which in turn allowed for the price of cement and other building materials to be revised accordingly. The downward trend in policy interest rates throughout this calendar year, with the standing deposit facility rate and standing lending facility rate at 8.5% and 9.5% respectively, has encouraged investors to pursue fixed-term loans for construction projects. Noteworthy tariff reductions in fuel, energy and utility services were implemented during the quarter. All of these factors allowed for a boost in purchasing power and investor confidence to a greater extent the stimulating steady economic growth. While maintaining its conservative outlook for the short to medium term, Tokyo Cement remains optimistic of stabilization of the country's economic fundamentals as the year progresses. Sri Lanka listed company Dipped Products PLC said its board had approved in principle the acquisition of a Thailand-based rubber glove manufacturing facility. The company said in a stock exchange filing that the acquisition of the Thailand-based rubber glove manufacturing facility is contingent upon conducting a due diligence study. The potential investment for this acquisition would be approximately 11 million US dollars and the acquisition will be carried out through Deep Products Thailand Limited, which is a subsidiary of the company. In May, 
the Sri Lankan based glove maker Deep Products PLC opened a market office in India as a part of the efforts to strengthen the presence in key markets. Deep Products is a subsidiary of Haley's PLC. Established in 1976, Deep Products is one of the world's leading rubber glove manufacturers, accounting for a 5% global market share. DPL specializes in industrial, household, sport, electrician and medical gloves. H&B General Insurance has announced a strategic partnership with Cargill's bank to provide bespoke general insurance solutions tailored to the specific needs of Cargill's bank customers. This collaboration ensures that customers of Cargill's bank can now benefit from comprehensive coverage and financial security for themselves and their families. As the management of HNB highlights, the partnership will particularly benefit the customers of Cargill's Bank's robust agri-product portfolio by offering them a variety of general insurance solutions tailored to meet their diverse needs relating to agricultural enterprises and activities. Mr. Situmena Jayasundara, CEO of H&B General Insurance, stated that this partnership not only solidifies their market presence, but also underscores the commitment to integrating comprehensive financial and insurance services for improved customer satisfaction. Sampath Bank PLC has announced its intention to issue 100 million debentures, each priced at 100 rupees. This move is part of the bank's strategy to raise 10 billion rupees in total, likely to support its capital base and finance future growth initiatives. The bank will issue up to 50 million Basel III compliant Tier 2 listed, rated, unsecured, subordinated redeemable 5 year debentures with a non viability conversion at 100 rupees each to raise 5 billion rupees initially. The bank said in a stock exchange filing that with an option to issue up to a further 20 million of said debentures to increase the said sum by up to a further 2 billion rupees at the discretion of the bank in the event of an oversubscription of the initial issue. There would be a further issue of 30 million more debentures to increase the sum by another 3 billion rupees in the event of an oversubscription of the initial issue and the second tranche. The proposed debenture issue is a subject to obtaining all necessary regulatory and shareholder approvals and provided other conditions are acceptable to the bank. People's Leasing and Finance PLC, a subsidiary of People's Bank, has announced the appointment of Mr. Sanjeeva Bandaranaika as its new Chief Executive Officer and General Manager. His appointment is effective from the 6th of August 2024 and has received the approval of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. Mr. Bandaranaika brings with him over 36 years of comprehensive experience, with 31 of those years dedicated to the non-banking financial institution sector. Having joined People's Leasing and Finance PLC in 2007 as the Deputy General Manager of Finance and Administration, he has been instrumental in driving various strategic functions such as finance, treasury, administration, human resources, information technology, credit and marketing. Let's take a short commercial break. Global updates on the other side. Welcome back to the Nightly Business Report. Asia's major stock indexes saw a mixed day today, approaching the end of what has been a volatile week for the region's equities, sparked by the Bank of Japan's historic interest rate rise and fears of a U.S. recession. Shares bounced between gains and losses, while the yen and U.S. bonds attempted to rebound as global investors struggled to find their footing. China's stock market showed a little more resilience, outperforming neighbors as investors eyed Chinese assets as relatively safer investments despite ongoing economic uncertainty. Elsewhere across the region in earlier trades, Singapore, Manila and Bangkok rose while Sydney, Seoul, Mumbai, Wellington and Taipei and Jakarta were in the red. U.S. stocks ended lower with the Nasdaq falling 1% as technology shares declined and weak demand in a 10-year Treasury auction stoked investor jitters in choppy trade. 
U.S. stocks ended lower on Wednesday as technology shares declined, with investor jitters stoked by weak demand in a 10-year Treasury auction. The Dow dropped six-tenths of a percent, the S&P 500 shed three-quarters of a percent, and the tech-heavy Nasdaq lost one percent. The indexes started the day higher, but began to lose steam in afternoon trading, pairing gains further after the Treasury auction. A steep global stock sell-off earlier this week rattled investors who have been worried about a possible U.S. recession and weaker-than-expected forecasts from U.S. companies. Stocks on the move Wednesday included Walt Disney, down roughly 4.5 percent after it predicted a moderation in demand at its theme park business in the coming quarters. Shares of fellow entertainment company Warner Brothers Discovery ended the session higher but tumbled more than 8 percent in after-hours trading after missing Wall Street expectations for quarterly revenue. And shares of AI high-flyer super microcomputer fell 20 percent after the server company reported quarterly adjusted gross margins below estimates. Rival Dell dropped more than 7 percent. Walt Disney predicted that business would slow at its key theme park division. This comes at a time when inflation has pinched consumer spending, underscoring worries about the slowing U.S. economy. Disney's shares fell as much as 4 percent in Wednesday trading after it predicted business would slow at its key theme park division. A company executive said the issue would persist for a few quarters, but he wouldn't call it a protracted problem. Analysts say weakness at Disney's parks coming at a time when consumer spending has been pinched by inflation underscores worries about the slowing U.S. economy. This overshadowed the success of the animated Pixar film Inside Out 2 and the company's television business. The combined streaming businesses of Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus posted a profit for the first time. One analyst told Disney can continue to deliver profitability in streaming quarter after quarter. It will have cracked the code. CEO Bob Iger is working to rebuild Disney after billions of dollars in losses from streaming efforts, the decline of traditional television, and a rough patch for its storied film studio. Inside Out 2 notched $1.6 billion in global ticket sales. And Deadpool and Wolverine, which debuted in the current quarter, has brought in more than $850 million. And with that, we conclude today's nightly business report. See you again tomorrow with more key updates across the business world. Until then, I'm Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. Have a good night.